how to dismantle, clean, and reassemble a Cato F-Series locomotive in the N scale. We'll do it right now. Stick around. Hey everybody, this is Brian with the Iron Horse Route, home of the Denver and Rio Grande Western, coming to you with a how-to video that I've been meaning to upload for a while. I've been taking apart these Kato F7 units uh, for a couple years now, and I've gotten pretty good at it, so I figured I'd put out a video and show you what, uh, how to do it, or how I do it. The materials used are Goof Off, 90% Isopropyl, CRC-226, Toothpicks, Tweezers, Wet Wipes, Q-Tips, a number 11 blade, water, and a paint tray not a whole lot to it toothpicks are a vital um, part of getting these guys apart now I don't have a front coupler on it so that makes my job a little easier in this case toothpicks are going to go directly inside the trucks between the frame and the shell and you don't have to stick them in real far, you just have to pop it up over those little tabs that are in there, and they're pretty small. And so what you'll do now is, once you get all four of them in, give you a good look at that. You don't even quite have to stick them in that far. Then you can just lift up on one of them and with the other three in there and it just pops off. Sometimes you might lose a piece of the window piece out of there when you do that and it's real easy to put back in. They've got a tab on them and you just want to make sure they're pointing to the bottom and then there are extrusions that snap into the portholes from the inside. It snaps in clean and tight. Trucks come off without tools. They just pop off. I actually kind of tilt it one way and try to pull one side off and then flip it back and try to pull the other side off. They come off pretty easy. Surprisingly easy, matter of fact. You do not want to send this across the room. Put your finger over the top of the pin that uh, keeps the light board down because um, it will snap, shoot off of there. You don't want to do that. There are two little prongs here that you pry up before trying to pull the light board off and you want to keep those nice and straight. Um, and then once you do that, the light board will pick up and come right off of it. Okay, the electrical pickup strips here, um, they have a 90 degree turn in them, two of them on both sides. And where that thing does the 90 there is a little hole that you can get your toothpick in right there. And then you can just slide it a little bit back and forth. It, once you pop one of the ends out from the, that's the worm gear cover there that it's down in in the end there. And so once you pull one of those ends out of the worm gear cover, the other would just pull right out. And you want to be careful with those. I try to keep them as straight as possible. I do bend them up. I've got some old ones. These, this is a, uh, an older set of those here. And so what you do now is this just pops right off. Even easier than the truck. Now, what I do here with the toothpick is I just give it a little bit of pressure with the toothpick on each side just to kind of loosen it up a little bit. And then I kind of go through there. You do not need a tool to pull the motor out at all. You just need to kind of get in there. Um, it just presses down into place. And so what you just have to do is find something where you can get between there. Uh, even your fingernail will work. Um, I just like to pry it up a little. I'm careful there because you still got the worm gears in place. And so once you pull the motor up a little bit, you can actually pop the worm gears out and then the rest of it. Once they're out of their um, little housing down there, it's a little bit easier to get the remainder of it out.
the worm gears have two plastic pieces on them. Both of them just pull right off of the end very easily. I take them off because I'm going to clean them. Um, the motor unit will pop straight out of there. You can just pull it right that out of there. And then my understanding is you can pull it apart. I've never taken it that far. But, um, okay, your truck cover there is has got two holes that the gear snap down into and then four pins that it pops into from the little dimples on the other pickups there so you want to kind of ease those out one at a time because you don't want to bend those real bad these wheel sets you just pop them straight up and out very simple and this little interior frame here has got some gears in it and Kato says that you can um, take that apart and clean them although I've never been successful in getting that apart <clears throat> without breaking something so I don't recommend it unless you really need to the wheels have pins or posts <clears throat> the metal wheels have pins or posts you just pull them right out of the axles kind of spin those gears on that thing just to make sure that um, there's nothing hung up in there because I can't get inside to clean them and it's usually not really needed. I got a little dog here out here in the shed from Gracie but I did learn that it was Gracie was not really the culprit there it was these uh, pads the cleaning pads I was using from Dollar General don't do that. Um, I was using these uh, they were two dollars a pack or a dollar a pack or both I think there was some different ones and uh, man they really are perfect for cleaning the track perfect size and great little you can just put your finger on them and run them around the track it was great but i ended up figuring out i was getting fibers on the track and then my um, locos were picking them up so to clean it i just put them in goof all and then i move them into alcohol and then i move them into water and then i let them dry and then if it's metal i brush them with crc 226. talk about more that about that in a little while these are those little fibers that I was talking about a second ago that are coming off those cleaning pads. Um, and the, I tell you what though, the train ran good cleaning those things. Uh, I think the fibers acted like uh, grip or traction um, because the train ran great. I was running 16 cars one day with like two loco, which is very unusual for my layout. Okay, so we're moving everything over here to dry, or some of the stuff over to dry. And these little dimples right here, those little insides of those dimples, they get corrosion or dirt of some kind in there, and you will begin to notice a lack, a loss of electrical pickup as a result. So I discovered, because they don't tear, I use, I blunt the end of a toothpick, and then I push it into these wet wipes. And then I do your seesaw sawing motion, that's not seesaw, but whatever that is and um, I can pull that <clears throat> grime or dirt or whatever that is out of there and I can get them pretty clean in there and I do notice a, a difference in my electrical pickup what how much how much I need to use on the throttle um, I notice once I clean these up real good all of them I can uh, get the train around with less throttle that's what I'm trying to say and so the wheels go in the goo gun, in the alcohol, then the water, then they dry, then the CRC brush, then they dry, then they go back on. wheels from goof off to alcohol and really <clears throat> what that alcohol does is that's that those wheels have been sitting in that goof off and then when you drop it in the alcohol and swish it a little bit whatever debris is in there gets knocked loose and then when you hit that hits the water you can definitely see that it's cleaning them up um, if you look at the murky uh, water up there in the top right and so I don't use a lot of here um, some of you might have been questioning what I was talking about here I just actually hit the tip of the q-tip there like that 
and then we brush through the electrical pickup strips. See, there's some corrosion on the uh, insides of those right there where they meet the electrical, <clears throat> the other electrical pickups that are attached to the truck. And so I clean that off and I let it dry. Um, the more I let it dry, the better it does. And I do the same here with the electrical light board. I try to make sure there's very little CRC on it, but I just use it to kind of moisten the tip so I can just uh, wipe the any debris that might have fallen off. And then we're going to let everything dry. And once everything's dry, it is time to put it back together. I set the motor in first. And I do not press it all the way down because I've got to put the worm gears in each end. So I leave, you know, quarter of an inch. It's sticking up. Um, the plastic pieces snap right back on the worm gear. Looks a little bit funny, but the big square piece goes on the little bitty end, and the little bitty round piece goes on the long post. The square piece is going to go to the outside of the locomotive, and the round piece is going to go to the inside. There is a little, it's a very clear, easy to see. There's a hole that slides right into there. No tools are required. Um, the, the, taking this loco apart really doesn't require much. We're just going to poke it in the edge there and there is a more difficult to hit and you don't even necessarily need to over there on the left hand side you see the square piece um, there is a little groove there that that fits down into and even if you got it perfectly straight right now it's not ready to go all the way down because you don't have the other side but you can leave it a uh, little sideways and it'll keep keep holding you up where you want to be you get both of them in and then I just use the tip of a, a toothpick to flip the uh, little square around and it'll drop right into the hole. And once it drops and gets ready to go down, then I can press the other quarter inch of the motor. It goes in clean and nice that way. Um, if I try it a different way, it doesn't usually go in so clean, but it's a pretty mop. I do say so myself. All right, now putting the uh, wheels back on the axles, there's absolutely nothing to that. The only thing with this is you do want to make sure they're in there securely. If you leave them out a little bit, you can find that you will have a loco that doesn't run as well as you're expecting after you just cleaned it all up. But if you go in there and make sure they're pressed in firm and snug, uh, your loco seems to run like new again. It's happened to me several times. Okay, this is the worm gear cover, and they have little pegs on them that stick out on one side, and those need to be facing inside, pointing at each other. They snap right down. Your electrical pickup strips right there, you can see where they're going to go in both ends, and that is uh, one of the more tricky parts of the process. Um, you've got to, you got a lot you got to look at here. You want to make sure that the prongs that are attached to the frame still right now you need to make sure they're straight up because these electrical pickup strips go inside of them. Then the electrical, each electrical pickup strip attaches in five places, one on each end in the worm gear covers. And I usually try to get one of those in and then I'll work my way back this way. Then there is a pin in the middle. So that's three of them. And then right where the model does the 90 degree turns, there's a place that it snaps in right in there and you want to get all those snapped in nice and get that thing good and flat because you want your light board laid good and flat as you can see you can actually um, bend those too bad i've got uh, that thing's bent up a little bit but what happens too is that little pin in the middle over time because it's plastic can get shaved off and won't hold the middle as well the good thing is the other four, really, if you see right there, I'm pointing at, that's where the 90 degree is right there. That's where that thing snaps in, right there on the inside of the 90 degree. And you just pop them in and it, it goes in and sets pretty well. Um, and when they're good and flat, that's good because you want to get the light board in there right on top. 
um, and you want it laying flat as well and we're going to do that right now um, I make a mistake putting the light board on here and um, I hope you will not do the same I need to slide that light board up about a quarter not a quarter an inch maybe a sixteenth of an inch because it's got a place on the front right where it fits right there you can see the little groove there where the light goes so you know you're right you've also got the place right there where the two copper pieces are finally now going to flip back over to hold the light board down then right back to the left of that is a little pin and it's got a little hook on it and if i get the light board in there just right it sits down in there more snugly and under that hook and i missed that hook when i put it on here right now so y'all try not to do that um you when you flip those when you flip those uh two copper pieces back over to hold that light board down you want to make sure they're extended as far as you can get them without pulling anything loose of course because it's hard to get that pin right there to hold both those um, copper clips that flip over there and to 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 get into the clip piece um, it's hard to do that sometimes it's not easy um, this is simple really um, those frames right in there have gears on one side you just make sure that the axle which has gears on one side is pointing the, to the gears on the frame side so wherever the gears are in that frame you just want to make sure your axle has that gear the gear on the axle is pointing towards those gears as well they all work together the other side is free on both sides so it makes it easy to see um, also those uh, covers over there on the left hand side is where those gears pop out and so that uh, tells you how to do that this is tough right here um, you've got to get the dump dimples on the wheel sets okay there's also some pins in the middle there okay you get it set in there you definitely can feel it and know then you gotta hold it okay and you gotta hold on the center over there where you make sure it's not getting loose then get this one fixed in there without the bottom one getting messed up and that takes a little bit of practice and talent you can kind of watch what i do and maybe get some hints but um, once you get them both on there it's cake because then you just make sure you're keeping pressure in the middle there on those two you do not release those two until it is seated firm in the clip okay in the cover there um, you do you, you do not release them because they'll you got to redo the whole process so keep a firm grip right there then you make sure that those holes are on the same side as the gears and then what I do is I just kind of plunge one side in there and then set the other end in a little lighter. And then I make sure to put pressure on both ends and I need to hear a snap. That gear needs to snap in on both sides there and I should hear snap, snap. And if I hear both snaps, usually I've got a very clean running truck. Now, if I don't get both snaps, sometimes you'll, I'll find when I um, check the wheels that they're not rolling as, as good as I would like. As you can see here, I just took that back apart right there. It didn't snap in good. And that's really good. It's, it's important for a, if you want your Loco to run really nicely, you need to make sure that that's, these are right right here. And they just pop right in. Just the uh, electrical pickups go right there between the um, worm gear and whatever that is, the frame. snaps right in and if you put it together right that shell right there will slide like on like butter and boom and it'll lock in where it's supposed to and I want to thank you guys for watching today I want to appreciate you if you have not already I want to encourage you to subscribe share this with your other model and friends you think might enjoy this video I hope this will help a few people if they get stuck in a bind um, I know it took me a little while to learn how to do it, and there wasn't another resource, so I figured I'd make this video and shoot it out. I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for sticking in and watching. I would appreciate it if you leave a comment and like the video, so I know you were here. Thanks, guys.